One of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to watching videos on YouTube or really anywhere else is when somebody is showing a still photo in their video and they do absolutely nothing to make it more interesting. They just drop a still photo in the timeline. It, it drives me nuts. There, there's no movement. There's no, there, there's just nothing. They don't even do anything to fill the frame. So I, I, I can't stand that. So today what I'm going to do is share with you six quick tips for bringing some life to those photos and making your videos just a little bit more interesting. And the best part about this is you can do all of these tips in the edit page in DaVinci Resolve. You don't have to go to color or fusion or anywhere else, all within the edit page. And and I've got a quick little bonus tip at the end of this video, so make sure you stick around for that. But before we get into any of that, I'd like to tell you about today's sponsor, Reshot. Reshot is a completely free resource for stock photos that you can use in your videos, your website, for YouTube thumbnails, basically whatever you want. And there's a ton of stuff to choose from in a whole bunch of different categories, like people and lifestyle, food, business, you name it. In fact, all of the photos that I'm using in today's tutorial are from Reshot. And I found them really easily because Reshot is organized so nicely. It's easy just to browse through all the different categories and see what they have to offer. Or if you're looking for something specific, you can just head on over to their search bar and type in what you want. Reshot is brought to you by the guys over at Envato, who have a long track record of providing high quality assets for your creative projects. So if you're looking for free stock photos that you can use in your videos, thumbnails, website, or whatever, make sure you go to the link in the description and check out Reshot today. All right, let's just get started here. I've got five photos lined up and ready to go. We've got a woman looking over a city, think she's in an infinity pool or something. Thing. We've got a nice little portrait going on right here. We've got a wedding photo. We've got some coffee because of course coffee and we've got a nice foggy forest, but all of these are still frames. There's no movement whatsoever. If I were to throw these into a timeline in a video, it would just be boring. So let's bring some life to these. Let's come back to our very first photo, make sure that's selected. And the first thing we're going to do is just use our basic transform controls in the inspector in DaVinci Resolve. You can use that to keyframe your position, your zoom, your rotation, all sorts of different stuff. Today, what we're going to do is just a quick little left to right pan to get this photo moving a little bit. So we've got our photo selected. Let's come into our inspector. If you don't see your inspector, just click on inspector up here in the top right. Now I need a little bit of room to work with here. So what we're gonna do is take this zoom and we're going to increase it to 1.05. And now let's set up our pan. We're gonna use our X position here and we're going to select that. We're gonna type in 50. That's gonna shift our photo over to the right a little bit. I, I chose 50. Uh, because I did some time, you know, experimenting when I was preparing for this video. When it comes to you, it really just depends on how far you zoom in. You'll have to drag left and right to find the right numbers. For me, 50 works. So let's go ahead and set a keyframe by hitting this little diamond right here. And now let's come to the end of our clip, come back to our X position, type in minus 50. That will automatically set a keyframe and we can come back to the beginning, play this through. We've got a nice little left to right pan. And if I really wanted to get fancy with it, I could actually keyframe my zoom as well. Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to punch in a little bit more, maybe 1.15 or maybe actually let's not do it that much. Let's go ahead with 1.1. Set a keyframe there, come back to our last frame. We're going to set this to 1.05. And let's go ahead and play that again. So now we've got a left to right pan and a zoom out going on at the same time. 
that's not bad. We're moving a little bit now. It's a little more interesting, a little bit more engaging. Now let's move on to our portrait. Now the big problem with this portrait, other than the fact that there's no movement, we will fix that. But the other big problem is the fact that it's just black on either side of here. If you were watching this, if it was a typical 16 by nine video, this would all just be blank. You would just have this boring portrait here. Let's fix that. Let's fill the frame using an effect in DaVinci Resolve called blanking fill. Now blanking fill can be found in our effects library. If you don't see your effects library, just click effects library up here at the top left. And we can quickly find blanking fill by typing in blank in the search bar. There it is, blanking fill. Let's go ahead and drag that onto our photo. And now you've got your photo right here in the middle. You've got a stretched out version of the photo behind it and it's blurred and now the photo is it fills up the entire frame, which we like. We it it, it just looks better. Although I'm not a huge fan of how they stretched the photo to fill the background. So we're gonna fix that by going into our effects control. Once again, coming into our inspector and this time clicking on effects, you'll see blanking fill here and we've got a bunch of stuff to do. So first let's do our zoom mode. Let's go ahead and do zoom to timeline. That looks a lot better, I think. If you wanted, you could blend the edges of the video, but I'm not a huge fan of that. We'll just keep that down. You can increase or decrease the blur of the background. You can fade the background a little bit. You can change the color of the fade. So let's go ahead and maybe do some kind of teal. Nah, we don't like that. Let's go ahead and let's bring the color down a little bit. You could do something like that. We're going to cancel that and just keep it the way it is. We can also add a drop shadow to our foreground photo. So we can do shadow strength, increase the strength a little bit. Now it's popping out and it looks a lot better. You can change the drop angle if you want. Let's bring that back to the beginning and you can change your drop distance. That's looking good right about there. Now, as far as movement on here, we can come up to our source drop down and here we can crop left and right. We can crop top and bottom and we can also do the zoom. So let's go ahead and make sure we're at the beginning of this clip. We're going to increase our zoom to right about there set a keyframe come to the end bring our zoom down it'll automatically set a keyframe and now if we play that back that looks so much better than it did before so by now you see kind of the punchline. We want to fill the frame and add a little bit of movement. Those two things on their own are going to bring a whole new life to your still photos when you add them into your video's timeline. But that's just like two effects right there. We've got four more to go. So let's move on to our wedding photo here. Again, it doesn't fill the whole frame. It's not moving. It's kind of boring. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of create a solid color frame using solid color. Let's go ahead. First thing we want to do is select this clip. And what we're going to do is bring that up to track number two. And then we're going to come back over to our effects library. Let's clear this search bar and we're going to come up to our generators, go down to solid color. And we're going to drag that into our timeline directly below our photo. And let's select our solid color. Make sure generator is selected. We're going to click on color. We're just going to lighten this up, not pure white, but maybe a light gray there. Go ahead and hit OK. And that's looking better. It's looking a little bit more, you know, wedding bookish, except we still just have these gray stripes on either end. It doesn't really look like a frame. So let's just select our photo here and bring down our zoom maybe to 0.85. 
And that already looks a lot better, but I want to, I want to do some more stuff here. Let's go ahead and add an effect. Let's come back into our effects generator. And this is the next effect I want to show you, the next tip, and that is drop shadow. So let's top, type in drop. And there's nothing in generators, obviously. So let's come down to open effects. Here we go, drop shadow. Let's go ahead and drop that onto our photo. And now we've got a nice little drop shadow underneath our photo. It kind of pops out. It looks a lot better than it did before. And if we come over to effects in our inspector, you can see we can change the shadow strength, the drop angle, the drop distance, the blur, the color, all of that stuff. We're actually gonna come back to that because what I wanna do is add some motion into that and we're gonna do that using zoom. So let's go ahead and come back to the beginning here. We're gonna come back into our video settings in our inspector and we're going to set our zoom to 0.95, set a keyframe, come to the end, change our zoom to 0.85, and now if we play that back, we've got a little bit of movement there, but let's, let's add this drop shadow into the mix because it's just, I think we can bring a little bit more realism to it. So let's go ahead and come into our effects and go into our drop shadow effect. And we're gonna go to drop distance and we're gonna change this to 0.15 set a keyframe, and we're gonna to come to the end, change it to 0.05, that'll automatically set a keyframe. And now if we play that back, we've got a shadow on the photo, it's getting closer as the photo gets closer to the white background, it just, it looks really, really nice. Now, up until now, all of our movement has been with the zoom and the position and all of that stuff, but your movement in your photos doesn't necessarily have to be the position of the photo itself. It could be with the color, and that kind of brings me to the next effect I wanna show you, which is color compressor. Let's move on to our photo of this coffee being made. What we're going to do first is we're actually going to kind of do the same thing here. We're gonna bring this up to track two. Let's just go ahead and hold down alt and drag our solid color underneath that photo. Let's select our photo and bring our zoom down to 0.85, add a little frame, maybe add drop shadow again just so it looks nicer. And now what we're gonna do is actually make this photo go from black and white to color. And in order to do that, we're going to use the color compressor effect. So once again, let's come back into our effects library, clear that search bar, go to color and take color compressor, drag it onto that photo. Make sure our playhead's at the beginning of the clip, come into our inspector, go to effects, double click on color compressor, and we've got compress hue, compress saturation, and compress luminance. We're gonna work with saturation here. What we're gonna do is we're going to take our saturation, our compressed saturation, bring it all the way up. That's gonna turn this into a black and white photo. And we're gonna move our playhead to maybe the middle of the clip. Well, actually we need to go back to the beginning set a keyframe on our compressed saturation, and let's go ahead and move to the middle of the clip, bring our compressed saturation all the way down. And now, if we play that, you can see our photo is coming to life. All right, almost there. I've got one more effect to show you and then my nice little bonus tip. I hope you're sticking around for that because it's a good one. Let's take a look at our forest. Now this one is filling the frame, but once again, there's absolutely no movement and we're not really going to add movement. Maybe we will, maybe we'll do a little bit of a zoom or something like that. But first let's go ahead and do our effect. So what we're gonna do is select that photo. We're gonna come back into our inspector or into our effects library, clear that search bar, and we're gonna type in lens. We're gonna grab lens blur and drag that onto the photo. Come into our effects menu in our inspector. We're gonna come down to blur size. 
Let's go ahead and set a keyframe, come to the middle, bring our blur size all the way down. That's gonna set another keyframe. And if we play that back, you can see it's like our photo is coming into focus. And I guess just to make that a little bit interesting, let's come back to the beginning. Let's go to our video control. We're just gonna change the zoom here from 1.05, set a keyframe, come to the end and make that one. Add a little bit of movement, add that blur. There you go. Now, all of the position changes, the zooms and everything was done with the basic transform controls in DaVinci Resolve. But there's another way to do that, and that's with my bonus tip, which is using dynamic zoom, which is also found in the inspector. I actually did an entire video on how to use dynamic zoom in DaVinci Resolve. If you wanna check that out, click here. And for more tools, tips, and tricks that'll make you a better video editor, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.